welcome to the MMA Museum podcast. And uh, I have the honor today to introduce our guest, Hoyler Gracie, a true legend, uh, one of the longest lived black belt competitors in jujitsu, uh, now a coral belt and uh, teaching uh, in, in California since 2008. But uh, he doesn't do many interviews. I think this might even be the first long interview in English. So Hoyler, how are you? Thank you very much. Hey, Miguel, how are you? So good, man. You can't complain, no? Life is beautiful. You know, especially right. when you teach something, you know, you work with something you really enjoy and having a good time. You know, um, yeah. we talk a little bit about, but uh, I will start training jiu-jitsu as soon as I'm at three years old. It's amazing, you know. We don't have no idea how big it will be. You know, it's yeah. back in the time. And then we're coming from Brazil, and uh, Brazil is very popular. It's a, it's a soccer. Everybody likes to be a soccer, you know, play soccer. And uh, what we see, I'm just going to go in a different way. You know, I try to play soccer too. But then one day I see I'm with the gi and with the ball. And the mm -hmm. ball is gone. And then I still have the gi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, your, your family, obviously, you said three years old. I've seen pictures of you with your hand getting raised and you're, you know, little boy, a little boy. Yeah. Uh, My first so competition is uh, six years old, you know. Wow. Yeah. So. No, the, and the, how come your other brothers didn't compete as much in, in, in jiu-jitsu as you? Was it well, just a, compete, a fever for compete, you? But here and there, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of design. It's everyone have a different design. Everyone likes to do different stuff. Was well, back in the time when you were a kid, you just compete to having a good time, enjoy, you know. Like I say, my first competition is six years old, and then I'm, um, it's 1971. My God, that's a long ago, you know. And then yeah. I, I compete after that, keep going, you know, it's whatever they have a tournament, I go. And to be honest, since the first one, I lost. <laughs> you know, imagine for a little kid lost his competitions the first time. It's, you know, if you don't have the, the support for the family, we'd be embarrassed. You go back home, everybody like crucifies you and, you know, give you a hard time. I remember back in the time when we go for the tournament, my father put all the kids together. Then he say, who win? I give you $10. Who lost? I give you $20. And then everybody looked like, hey, he give you $20 for you to lose? Nobody like to lose. I prefer win and got the gold medal and got less money than lost and got, you know, silver medal. Mm -hmm. Well, that day, I don't got nothing, but I got more money than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. and that's how how's my father conduce and put everything together. It make everybody happy, you know. It's amazing. Now, your father, obviously, a, a legend, and uh, yeah. I think because you were in Brazil, that you may be the guy who was closest to him. You know, uh, well, it's back in the time. Yeah, let's go visit him in his ranch. He's living in Petrópolis, and there's a big, big area he have over there. You know, of course, before before he passed away, it's, that's his his place. His kind of you know meditation, and uh, with my mom too, they live it together. You know. But uh, yeah, you know, the old man is very ahead in his time. And every time he opens his mouth, I'm going to keep quiet and listen to him. You know, it's like, I'm glad I be with him a lot, you know, and listen to the history and everything he's talking about. It's amazing. Now, they, they tell me I could go to the academy the first day, train good, you know, help clean the floors, be respectful. And everybody says, hey, the new guy... He's okay. And Helio might say, yeah, but his shoes were dirty. That he was tough on people. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know, to be honest, you know, the first time I start, talk to him about, you know, to be a teacher, it's a, it's a Sunday. We just sit in the sofa, watch TV. I'm, I'm around 14, 13 years old. You know, as when a little kid, teenager, you like to go, I, I, can, I like to be a teacher. And I told him, say, I like to be a teacher, dad. And then he looked at me. In my mind, I say, you know, I'm going to be half a day. I'm going to be in the school. And the other half a day, I will be surfing. I'm going to go to the beach, you know, and I have nothing to do. And he looked at me and said, okay, tomorrow is Monday. You're going to show up in the school. Uh, 6.30. The class starts 7. And then you go 7 to noon. And then you have two hours for the lunchtime. 
And then two hours, you can do whatever you want. Come back again at 2 p.m. And then you leave the school when the last student leaves the, the academy. It's around 10, 10, 30 p.m. I say, oh my God. When he told me this, I said, what time am I going to go surf? I stick in my mind, you know, but, <laughs> you know, you can do whatever you want in the weekend. The weekend, actually, Saturday and Sunday. Back in the time, we don't have people train Saturday and Sunday in Brazil. We just kind of relax. We go Monday to Friday. And then Monday, make sure you be in the academy with the beautiful mm -hmm. smile <laughs> and enjoy to be a teacher. And then I look at him. Well, the first time I talked to him about this, it looks like I signed a contract for 35 years. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, that's, that's how it's work. And the old man is very tight in this. You know, be on time, start on time, finish on time. He's perfect, yes. It's a perfection, you know. That's what he do all the time. And uh, my first job in the school, not even if you're a son with the grandmaster, Eddie Gracie, my first job in the school is not be a teacher. He put me to clean the bathroom. Yeah. And then I look at him, I say, hey, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the, be the teacher, I'm the son of the master. And he said, go ahead, clean the bathroom. And then he make me clean the bathroom four times in the road. <laughs> and then I say, why you do this to me? And then he say, you know what? When you're doing right, you do once. Never again, I clean more than once. Yeah. I learned my lesson. And that's how my father is. He's very, you know, when he do something, he do 400%, you know, and make us, all his sons do the same thing. We enjoy, we like, we have a patient. We, you know, this from the heart. You can see when you walk in to have a class with someone or you train someone, the guy like to be there. It's a different than when the person will be there for the money. That's completely different. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's now, exactly what the old man talking about. When uh, you became a black belt, I think it was 1982. Oh my God, I don't even remember. <laughs> I think 1982. Yeah, around that. your black belt. And this is a, when, you know, the the competition that people hear about happens, right. you know, and, right. and again, you are one of the most long lived competitors in history. And I, this is why I know you, you say, well, you know, thank you, or you're humble. But I know because. Guys from Carlson Gracie's team told me, and those were big rivals of yours. Yeah. Well, I was beat through a different generation, you know. Uh, one of the first guys I compete is a Marcio Cupertino, you know. 1984. That's a long ago, yes. Once, as soon as I got my black belt, that's one of the first guys, you know. And then it's after we have, like, Castro Cardoso, Peixotinho, you know, all them. I, I fight with everybody, man. You know, Pahumpinha, you know, all these guys. They're good, you know, De La Riva, you know. It's amazing, you know. They help you raise your level, I guess, because they gave you hard fights. They're very good, yes, of course. You know, they, I'm not complaining, you know. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to win all the time and then I'm going to have a hard time. Sometimes I, I lost, you know. But uh, for sure, we, move, we make this sport growing. It make the competitions getting better. And that's is actually Carson is my cousin. He always say, Man, you are you are a good fighter, but I'm never gonna stop to you know training my students to win somebody, you know, with the level you are and the family. I said, Wow, that's good, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I understand that we don't have a problem, you know. Yeah, no, now everything is good history. Um, but in those years, that rivalry was big. They they told me that you beat 10 black belts from Carlson Gracie's Academy. Oh, man. So, I, I don't know about that. But... <laughs> they said 10 yeah. black belts, four generations. Four that's, different, four, yeah, that's for sure. That's a, a couple of generations, you know. You're right, 100%, you know. The and then, Cupuccino, I think, was he or Peixota? Which guy was Murillo's instructor? Um, I'm not sure. I know it's it's, they all them is with Carson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so these guys, and they're very good, you know? Yeah. So now, in uh, 1999, you were, I believe you won the jiu-jitsu championships again, and uh, now you're an older competitor. And uh, in 1998, you hear about this Abu Dhabi thing that happened. Right. And uh, you didn't go in the first year. No. Carlson sent some guys. And some Carlson guys came back with money, <laughs> yep. you know, and uh, 
So tell, tell me about that process of deciding to say, okay, I'm going to go to Abu Dhabi in 99. You know, actually nobody heard too much. You know, the first, the first year, you know, as a lot of people go and say, well, when they coming back, they coming back with the money, the trophy and everybody have, they say, man, they trade you amazing how they trade you over there. You know, is the, the, the shaking, you know, that they, they put all together. It's amazing competition, it's a good level because they have a wrestler for every, all the countries, you know, people from Russia, from Poland, everywhere. Anyways, um, when I see these guys coming back, I say, oh, man, maybe I'm just try to go in the next year, you know, see how far we got to go. And then I'm just becoming a, a, a world champion in jiu-jitsu, you know, and that is a good step for me to maybe try to go to this one. And that's kind of, and then I'd be a Pan-American champion, world champion. Then I'm signed for the Abu Dhabi. When they invite me, I say, okay, let's go. You know, it's amazing because everything is different. And then uh, for this first tournament is Abu Dhabi, I maybe train it 15 days without the gi. Okay. My whole level is with the gi. And then take the gi off, kind of two weeks after, it's it's okay, you know, because I'm still comfortable, you know. And that's amazing. And then let's go there. And, and I got luck. I win the tournament, you know, with the tough guys, you know, and bring some money, bring in the trophy. And I say, oh, my God, I need to come in back, you know. And then I got a, a, a little extra trophy for the best fight the best on competitor yeah on the tournament and this is good more technical you know this is amazing you know and then i was coming back in the 2000 2001 yeah this is the three years i win in, in the road yeah yeah and uh you know your your main competitor over there was a young guy soka yeah uh, you know sometimes yeah he's a great competitor I, you almost feel bad for him because you you never you never let him beat you. <laughs> well, you know, you I'm not feel bad hurt. because when you're talking about the competition, that's the competition. But uh, no question about it, he's one of the best out there. You know, soccer is a is it's a, a, a kind of weird because I don't know he's have some um, issue when he fight with me, but he beat everybody, and then he's really good, very technical, and he's danger. But with me, the position is not working for somehow I don't know why. You know, I'm glad, you know, God <laughs> put the hands on me and say, hey, with this boy, it's not going to work. But um, he's a he's a really good competitor. And then I have a really good fight with him, not even in Jiu-Jitsu World Championship and Abu Dhabi too. You know, I, I believe if he's, I'm not there, he's going to be the champion. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned uh, that you won 99, 2000, 2001. In 2001, they skipped a year. And then yeah. went to Brazil in 2003. Did, Three, did yes. that year off hurt you as far as, you know, you're a little older, harder to prepare? Was yeah. there, Talk about the pressure going back to Brazil. I don't, for think, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, this is a, the, the happen is the guy fight, I fight with, um, uh, geez. <laughs> uh, I stick a third place on this tournament. I lose, yeah. to, I Eddie lose Bravo. to Eddie Bravo. And the happen is, on my fight with Daddy Bravo, I just lose the attention for a little bit, you know, and it's my fault, yes. But he take he capitalizing that he get advantage for that. That's good for him. The point is nobody know too much about this. When he win me, he fight again and he lost, and he's supposed to come back and fight for the third and fourth place, and he never coming back. And then the next day they knock in my room and yeah, say, hey, you'd like to fight for the 34? And then I need to come in back and do all the fights again. I do two or three fights again to go for the third and fourth place. And then I beat a couple guys and go to the third and fourth place with soccer uh, on this year. Um, yeah, me and soccer go to the third and fourth place. And then I win. I go back home with the trophy, third place, and some money. Yeah. And he's, he don't got nothing. Yeah. Walk for away. Sure. I, I can't believe, this. you know. Yeah. That's a, that's for him. His victory is when he win Hoyler. That's okay. Good for him if he think like that, you know. And then uh, he do a great job and he's a good fighter. But uh, why he don't coming back and take the third place? Because yeah. he lost the other fight and he don't like decide on coming back. You know, he win the tournament already when he win Hoyler. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would think this way. <laughs> but uh, let, let me ask that's you this. All right. Uh, this was going to be a hard year for you because the guy that beat him was, was Leo Vieira, who was yeah. the next champion after you. 
Yeah. So, you, what would a match between you and Leo be like? Well, it's hard to say, man. You know, it, it's very unpredictable because I can say whatever I say, and then he can say the same thing. You know, it, it's a very tight fight. It would be a very tight fight, and and Leo is in a really good shape in that time. And then, uh, for some reason, God don't put us together in the final. Yeah. You never, you can say whatever you want, but you never know what had real the the result. You know, like in my fight with with uh, Sakuraba, when the judge come and stop the fight, you don't know if you're gonna break my army. You don't know if the the finish, the time is finished. You don't know what's going on. People don't know. They don't. They don't have no idea what's what's gonna happen. And that's what I'm saying. You know, um, I think he do a great job in that tournament, and he deserved to win. You know, I wish yeah, I could be in the final with him, but yeah. God decide that. Yeah, you also you also had Barrett there, so you had a, a few good guys. Even Barrett, you had felt before, so it, uh, but you felt confident. You wanted you were here to win. You didn't feel like it was at the end of your career. Yeah, but you know, for you have idea. Nineteen ninety nine, I final with soccer. My final on the two thousand is a soccer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, two thousand one, it's me and Barry. Yoshida and Robinho in soccer got third place, third and fourth place. In the 2003, it's supposed to be Edge Bravo, supposed to be the third, fourth place, but he get away, he's walk away. And the final is be Leo Zinho and Barry, and the third and fourth place, me and soccer back again. You know, that's that's unbelievable. And it's more recognized. Soccer got a lot of you know titles on, on the Abu Dhabi, he's he need to be recognized for that too, you know. Yeah, no, it's a, and it's always the same guys because th that was the best. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Now yeah. let me let me take you back a little bit because we talked about Carlson and and the the rivalry with that team. You you also had a competition where you you've actually fought his son Carlson Gracie, uh, Jr. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Talk a little bit about that one. Well, this is a, I, I I don't know where this coming from on that time because Carlson Jr. actually trained with me. He just come into my academy, you know, my ties back in the time, you know, to to review some positions. Once once in a week, he come with me and we do review some review some position. One day he come and say, you know what? I, I don't think I can come here anymore. I say, what happened? And he say, well, my father liked me to fight with you. And then I look at him and say, you sure? He say, yeah, I don't wanna, but it's good, you know. I say, well, let's do it, man. But you know, if you fight, we're not gonna be, you know, you're not gonna come here again and keep training with me. And then we fight. This is okay. We fight twice, actually. Okay. And then I beat uh, him in two times. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, he's an amazing guy too. You know, he's very technical, very good, good person. I'm not sure what's going on in in his head. And then Back the cars, then. cars like a lot of competition, and just try to put this in his head. No, I don't. Not say the days today. I'm not see. They try to put the cousin against cousin. I don't think so. You know, there's more competition. You know, they like to see how far we're gonna go. Try to push him. He's younger than me at that time. Try to push him to compete more. It could be. I don't know. Okay. Now th th you mentioned in the academy. You know, a little bit. Let's take it even a little bit further back in history. There was that day that uh, Hugo Dante showed up and fought your brother. And then I believe uh, Helio or uh, asked you to fight Eugenio Tadio in the school. No, 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 no. They fight Hickson fight with uh, Hugo and at that time, and uh, Eugenio. It's, we have a little issue me and him on the day they invade the academy, and then okay. we have an issue. And then that day when the Hickson fight with Hugo, right away he say, "Let's do it." You know, and then um, let's finish this. We're not like to fight in the street. And that's we decide to fight. Okay, let's put together. And then me and him fight for 46 minutes with no gloves, everything clean. Yeah, that's good. And he's kind of pretty much almost 20 pounds heavier than me. He's pretty heavy, you know, at that time. And I'm a very skinny guy. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's a good experience for me, you know, with no yeah. money. Yeah, <laughs> no, no public, nobody, you know, this is good, you know, it's amazing. Your father made you do this, though. He said you have to defend. No, he don't make me do it. I like to do it. Okay. It's good for me. He never pushed me, say, hey, go ahead, do it. No, actually, Hickson told, the, and the time we discussed over there, Hickson said, what do you guys like to do? 
and they say, well, let's fight, you know, and then, well, let's go. And then we put together right away. You know, it's not something we're playing too much ahead. Well, let's do it, yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. Hickson told me a couple of days before, he called me and said, hey, maybe you can fight with Eugenio Tadeo in the academy. He's going to show up. You like to do that? I say, yeah, let's do it. Put myself, put my name. I'm first in the list. And uh, yeah, that's it. I don't even train you for the fight. You know, I'm not prepared for the fight. I just got there. Boom, that's it. Done. And Eugenio later on, had a crazy fight with your cousin Henzo. Yep. Were you at this one? No, I'm not there. No, no. I'm okay. with Hicks in Japan. Hicks is gonna fight on this on a pretty close uh, date. I'm in Japan with Hicks. Gotcha. I got you. So um, after the Eddie Bravo situation, you lo you know you lost Eddie Bravo. I I'm gonna ask you also about the interactions with your father because I think it's special. And I want to also mention one other thing. You said your father taught you always be on time. I remember you were the first guy at the room meeting in the first seat with, with your with another, you know, your coach with you, just waiting for the room meeting on time. The only Brazilian on time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, so you, you lived that way the whole time. But after uh, Eddie Bravo submitted you, the finish, Helio was in the audience. Right. Did you think about, you know, having to talk to him? And Because I think he got up and left. Where did you meet him and, and, and what happened there? Well, the deal is, you know, people need to be prepared to win and lose. If you don't like to lose, don't compete. You know, and that's what I learned from my whole life. I don't have 100% right I'm going to win. I win most of the time. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that I do that because I do my homework, I train, but we are human beings. Everything can happen. And sometimes the other guy has a better day than you. I have much better days than most of the guys I compete, but sometimes, you know, it's not the same. And that's what we're talking about. Everything has a reason. You know, that's, that's his day. He's doing right. I make a mistake. I can say whatever I want, you know. I'm not there in the day. I'm just thinking about something else, but no. He's doing right. And then that's it. If you don't like to lose, don't compete. That's what I saw. That's what I see. That's the pictures I see every time we're talking about well, how you feel with the loss. Hey, I don't feel nothing. Let's go back home, do my homework, and come back strong. You know, yeah. it's a competition. Somebody need to win. Somebody need to lose. You know, if you feel upset, you feel upset in the beginning, but this is go away right away. As soon as you jump in the academy and start training again, this is over, done. And that's supposed to be, you know, yeah. what's the teams they lost? They lost, they go cry for how long? Come on, you, you be sad, but you go back home, train again, and start over again. And then you're going to win, you know? Yeah. And, and that's the mentality I have from my family, from my father. My father is not even upset. He say, everything have a reason, don't worry about it. I say, okay, we're good to go. And that's the support I like to hear. You know, like yeah. I say, when I'm a little kid, got my first tournament, and then, uh, you know, I imagine I come in home and he say, are oh, you nothing? you doing a bad job. No, but he's always giving me more money. His support, yeah. you know, and that's I'm saying, win and lose is a part of the game. Yes. No, and I, I think you're right. You deserve more credit for coming back to the 3-4 match. And, you know, keeping the competition going and not saying, oh, you know, I'm not going to be champion. No, I don't want to do it. Every That yeah. really is part of right. that. Right. You know, that day, the guy knocked on my door, 7 o'clock a.m. and say, you like to come back because Eddie Bravo don't like to come back to the to the third and fourth. And then you need to come back to the whole bracket again. I say, yes, put my name. And then I win two fights and then go to the third and fourth place with soccer. Yeah. And the people don't know this. This is not in the history. Nobody talking about. They see I'm got the third place. How I can got the third place if I lost? Well, yeah. I just need to come in back in the bracket and then got win everybody and fight for the third and fourth. That's he don't like to do. That's all right. It's up to him. Now, why in Abu Dhabi did you never try the absolute? Like I remember, sometimes you would say I try it and then. Uh, at the end of the last, you didn't get picked, or what? What was the deal? Did you want to do that? I don't remember exactly, but to be honest, I never tried hard. 
I need to be honest. I never try hard to be in the open. You know, it's the guys are really big. And then I just come to do my job in my class. And then I, I believe back in the time, it's a lot of Brazilian guys, they bigger than me and they deserve more than me. You know, yeah. it looks like if I try to put my name, it looks like I put my nose up, but I'm better than everybody. I'm not better than everybody. And these guys really good level and heavy. I let give them a shot. You know, I'm not trying. I just put my name, but, uh, you know, if nobody like to go, I go. But I'm not trying to, you know, push too hard. Yeah. That's fair. Now, did you feel in uh, Abu Dhabi maybe the beginning of, like, all the Brazilians becoming a little more friendly? Because some of the wars before were kind of crazy. But now there you were, you know, if you didn't go in the tournament, maybe Kakareko did. That's a, well, you know, that's a Ruas guy. That's an enemy. Well, this is not an enemy. I don't see these guys as enemy. You know, to be honest, I feel I feel very calm every time we go to we go around the country. That's the flag is the Brazilian flags we have. You know, and the guys speak Portuguese. You know, and today I speak English. Yeah, and I'm American too. I got the, the American flag on on my on my shoulder. But the deal is, you know, you see people speak with you. They nice. You know, they, it, it, we forget what we have in, back in the time. You know. Yeah. Then that I was good. Like you say, of course, that. if the guy, the guy in your bracket, is it different because you see him? It's not an enemy, but it, it we're gonna fight. You know, it's not an enemy. I need to fight with you, and then I need to. I like to win because as a money talk, you know, and trophy, it's everything. It's a prestige. You know, it's a very important. We we get out there with the victory. I don't like to be in Abu Dhabi. I fight four times in Abu Dhabi, and uh, imagine I go home without nothing. Yeah. You know, I feel much better to get something, you know, and that's what I'm training for. And like everybody else, you know. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't want to bring up a loss, but you had the match with Sperry also. Did that affect you to not do the Open? Maybe is because once nothing. they get big and good, it's hard. You know, <laughs> to be honest, nothing affects me. I'm, 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 I'm upset with myself for a little bit, but that's it done, you know. And okay. Mario is much more strong than me. And he's really technical, too. I need to admit that. Come on. You yeah. know, I put myself on this situation. Yeah. What am I going to complain about? If you win, it's good, it's beautiful. But if you lost, I'm, I'm going to be upset. The guy is 40, 50 pounds is heavier than you. What are you talking about? Come on. Yeah. It looks like when I fight with him, my nose a little up. I think I'm better than everybody. And that's a bad thing. And then I'm I'm a little bit like that. I need to be honest at that time. And then yeah. it's good because he take me, put me down a little bit, say, hey, no, you don't think you who you are. Not like that. Come down a little bit. And that's good. When you lost on the moment in your life, sometimes it make you come down a little bit and make you observe and see things in a different way. On this loss, helped me a lot to coming back and re reevaluate what I need to talk, how I say, talk to the peoples, you know, and, you know, come down. I'm a light guy. The guy's a heavy guy. Come on. Be respect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Now, uh, let me ask you about, you say, you know, recycle, come back, go to the gym, always go to the gym, train. I heard that you had a crazy training for the IBJJFs that you used to leave the house or go away? What was the story behind some of that training? Um, you know, the, the deal is, I, I have four daughters, you know, and at that time, they little, they all over in the house, you know, and they always, when you train, they come with something, they cry, they need the help, my wife need the help, and then if I start to focus in the house, I'm not going to training myself and the deal is I try to rent an apartment mm -hmm. get away from the house go there kiss everybody when the nice moment and go back to my camping training and that's make me a difference between the other guys you know not I don't want my family I love my family but only this time for kiss be love and go I don't like to see the problems and my wife actually do the deal with all these problems and the kids cry and get to school, do this, do that, you know, during the whole day. And uh, I'm glad that I have this mentality to be a champion. If I don't have, I'm not saying I'm not going to be a champion, but it's going to be a different because you distract yourself a little bit. Yeah, and, it's um, the focus. 
yeah, this is more focused. That's a hundred percent, you know. And then I still have my feminists right there, you know. Yeah. Now, now, talk about MMA. Obviously, you know your family started it, you know, with the, <laughs> with the UFC and your brother and Higson. And uh, you did, you know, Higson did Shuto with the Valetudos. He won the tournament. He won Valetudo one, Valetudo two. And then the headline of Valetudo three in 1996 was you. And uh, who who was it you fought? You fought uh, 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 the Japanese, Asahi. Asahi, yes. Now, Asahi yes. Is, is fantastic and is a very different style. How what was that like? Were you you know how did you prepare? MMA is different, and this isn't like the Eugenia rules. There's rules in Shuto. So talk about everything. Yeah, everything is kind of it's a new for me on that time. You know, it's kind of like he you know you don't have no idea what's going on. I know, like my like I say all the time, my father never tell us we're gonna be a fighter. He tell us to train Jiu Jitsu to be prepared to protect yourself. And that's the difference that people see sometimes. They say, oh, you guys trained to be a champion. No, I'm not trained to be a champion. And then this is a consequence because I do my homework and then I start to give the pop, the events come pop out and they invite you to go. And then I feel comfortable. And then, you know, as Hicks opened the door in Japan and back in the times, and then I, when they, I go and then I'm, and they call me to go, is in 1996. With Asahi, this is kind of, I say, oh my God, I love to go. And then you do something you like, and then you make money even better, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you're going to see this on the first time when you jump into the fight, because nobody likes to get punched in the face. Says, don't make me wrong, I don't like either. And then you don't know how it's going to happen when you got the first punch, when what's happened. And the deal is, my father used to say this, you know the man when he's in the bad spot, when he got beat, then you know he's a man. You know, when you punch the other guy, you beat the other, it's easy, you know, oh yeah, I'm win. But when mm -hmm. someone beat you, it's a different, then you're gonna prove your, your, your value, what you, who you are. And uh, on this fight is actually, it's pretty technical fight because the guy don't throw too much punch. And then I try to see, you know, if you don't throw a punch, I'm not gonna throw a punch. And then little by little, boom, boom, and control. And then I choke him. That's good, beautiful. But when you, when is someone, let's say it's a different fight, the guy throw a punch with you, it's harder because we as Jiu Jitsu guys, we like to clinch. And if something going bad, well, we go back home, do the homework, start over again. That's mm -hmm. the that's the one thing I say, you know, it's, it, it's nothing changed. I used to do this. And then I feel the energy to get punch. It's not at the end of the world. When mm -hmm. you know this, make it easy. You know, for the beginner guys, always like, oh my God. I see a lot of good guys, they got punched in the face, they going crazy. They completely change, you know. And some ones, they feel like nothing. That's all right. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. That's a good, yeah. More you train, more comfortable you'll be. That's no question about it. So you were preparing for uh, the Shuto. You did a, a couple of NHB fights there. At some point in 1999, still this history, you get the phone call from Pride to fight Sakuraba. Now, Sakuraba, the Gracie killer, this is the, the image and stuff like this. And again, you're small. Why Why take this fight? It, 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 it's, was this honor? Actually, yeah, who taught me to the fight is Hickson. They like they like to put Hickson to fight. Hickson like to actually they offer Hickson. Hickson say, let's say if he win my brother, you know, my little brother, and then we we can jump in. The deal is um, when I jump for the fight, is the two things. I like to see how he gonna win me, and that's my challenge, personal challenge. I know he's heavy, he's strong, he's technical, and if I see the fight today, I don't see a win. But wait, we have agreement on the fight. We'll be two rounds, 15 minutes. Uh, 15? 10 minutes. I'm not sure now. It's a okay. 15 minutes. I think it's a, it's a 
10 minutes, two rounds, 10 minutes, or 15, no, 15 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. Two, okay. two rounds, 15. For two minutes, the, the rest. When I, I got the first round, I was going to the corner and talk to Hicks, and Hicks would say, what, what do you think? I said, man, I'm, you know, he's kicking a lot of my leg, he's giving me a hard time. And um, I go back to the second round, same thing. He's dominated the fight, no question about it. He liked to go on the floor too much, but he kicked me a lot. On the end of the second round, he's going to talk to me and he hold my arm on the Americana. And uh, I saw him hold the arm and he talked to the referee. And then right away, I'm my, my head on the rope. I look at Hicks in the corner and then I'm asking him, say, how long? And he said, 30 seconds for the end. When he say this, I say, man, he not catch my arm. I'm so flexible, you know, I scratch my, touch, touch my ear. And then he start to talk to the referee. 10 seconds later, the referee stopped the fight. That's hurt. Yeah. Because I say, whoa, I don't tap. And they stopped the fight. You never know what's going to happen after that. Because the, he can break my arm. I can tap. Or he never tap. And then he's going to do be a draw. Because that's the agreement we have. If you don't finish, if you not knock me out, or not finish him, not knock him out, we be a draw. We agree to that. But... That day, they tried to force him, put him with Hickson. And it's not going to be a good idea. He draw with the little brother. Yeah. For and sure. that's what happened. It's already set up, you know. Yeah. I that's understand. the only thing I see. Because for me, I lose if you're talking about points. But I don't lose for the agreement we have in that day. Yeah. That, yeah. The, that, the that's, that's, they, 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 they cheating. They, they steal the fight from me. So, you know, who do you think of, uh, and, and, you know, Hickson never fought Sakuraba. No, and, never fought. Henzo did after that, right? Yeah. And, you know, Sakuraba's very good. How did you feel about Henzo got his arm broken? Yeah, you know, he got in the bad position. And, and I don't know, for somehow they popped the army. Yeah. Henzo is an amazing fight, man. And if he's not happened, if this is not happening, you don't know what's going to happen in the fight. Yeah. You know, Henzo is you a are, You're the, one of the most flexible people on the entire planet. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, but, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't know if he's going to... Nobody knows the result of the fight on that day because I can tap, he can break my arm or the, the, the time is finished. We don't know. And that's just upset to me because I got a lot of beat, in the, you know, in the leg, you know, I don't even can walk in the next day. And then uh, the referee stole the fight from me, you know. Not yeah. the fight, but the draw. It's supposed to be a draw. That's I, yeah. I understand. He broke the agreement. The referee yes, messed right. it up. So yep. very interesting. So uh, um, you did MMA after that in, in the 2000s and things. But uh, was this, you know, this is a situation where how how, how was the training for that? How was the preparation for it? Did you go back to your brothers? Because uh, the game was changing, you know, too many rules, things like that. What, what was your experience in the 2000s fighting MMA? Yeah, we need to understand one thing. Uh, you know, for me, the MMA, when I start fight, it's already late a little bit. Yeah. And when you start to make money, it's more late. Yeah. Right? And then, and, uh, you know, the time is changing. There's a little new boys coming your reflex not the same and the training will be the same actually i have a hicks in my corner all the time i have a voice i have hoker in brazil they help me always you know we improve a lot you know we do a little box with claudio coelho back in brazil you know this is my boxing coach and uh but uh, you do your homework you do everything but as, like you say you know it's your reflex not the same and especially in my last fights I'm talking about. You know, I wish I came born when I do my last fight and then I'd be ready. You know, be in the cage like in UFC right now, it's going to be completely different. And that's, I believe, because it's hard for me to compare my primary time to yeah. my old time. You know, some yeah. people say, what do you think if you compete today with the boy? I say, man, it's no chance. Come on, we need to be honest. You know, I can have the knowledge, the best knowledge in the world. But these boys, they in, in really, I'm talking about jiu-jitsu, you know, in the, in, 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 in the no-gi or gi, 
they so fast, they so strong, they train exactly like I trained back in the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's nothing different. They don't take a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, jiu-jitsu. They train all day, and between the meals, they still train. That's exactly what I do my whole life. But you're getting old. You know, it's a yeah. time for change. You know, and then I not feel bad for that. I feel good. I do everything. How many, how many people in the world win one, two, three, four times world champion? How many people in the world win one, two, three, and got the third place in Abu Dhabi? Yeah. This one more recognition competition in the world. You mm. know, I'd yeah, be a whole famous in Jiu-Jitsu and ADCC. Come on. You know, yeah. and I'm not complaining about I, I I'm not gonna live my life as a I win, I'm a champion right now. I'm not a champion anymore. I used to be a champion. You know, you can't say no, you're a great champion. Yeah, but uh, I'm not a is a champion 2023. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Now let me let, let me ask you one of the last things about fights, and then we'll talk a little bit jujitsu. But have the Eddie Bravo rematch. This competition here that you came to say, why what, why didn't this not happen earlier? Why what? Why wasn't it, you didn't do it five years before or before, closer to well, because the they, they, they don't have they don't have a sponsor, they don't have nobody interested. They like to put me with him on the fight. And, you know, just for fun, let's see how you guys doing. They say, man, I'm not a, you know, I need to stop what I'm doing. I'm in a different time in my life. If you tell me today, can you fight today? I say, I don't think I'm going to fight. Well, I I pay you $10. Okay, I give you $100. I say, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. But if you change the numbers, mm -hmm. I'm going to start to say, okay, now I need to find a time to train. That's exactly what happened, you know. Not I don't want to fight. We need to talk about some because everybody paid to watch everybody make money they got the sponsor and then the fighters don't got nothing people need to stop this don't come into me and say hey i have a t-shirt for you i have 10 t-shirts for you you say the t-shirt you make money and then you yeah. fight for free next time i'm gonna pay you something that's the day i hear this my whole life in in brazil everywhere and then i'm not do that anymore i'm sorry yeah, no, that's a business intelligence. That's, exactly, that's a business because they make money. Why are you not gonna make money? Yeah, no, you know sure. when I fight with uh, with uh, Edge Bravo in Abu Dhabi, was a, I'm just looking for money. I'm fight for the money. Hey, don't don't play stupid. Come on, everybody says, oh, it's no, I like to be famous. No, no, you look, you like to be rich too. You like to have money, and that's what we fight for. We fight for the money, yeah. and then they offer it. Okay, I lost, I lost. Forget, man, go home. You know, it's same thing in the other one. You know, the, when they start to offer, they come with the numbers I'm looking for. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And the, by the way, the event is amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did a good job with the presentation and everything. So it was yeah. it was good. Good. Yeah. And I'm glad that it happened, even if it was a draw. <laughs> yeah. And so let me ask you a little bit about jujitsu, the, the, the progress of jujitsu. Uh, the generation after you. I'm going to throw some names I want you to talk about. And we start with Marcelo Garcia. Very technical, unbelievable skill. It's amazing guy. Good person, good heart. You know, he's is, is, is a little younger than me, you know, is in the time. And then I see him with uh, it's amazing skill. It's a really good guy, yeah. Yeah, is it Fabio uh, Gergel student? Did you, yep. uh, did you consider Fabio a rival when you were younger? Actually, Fabio trained with us when he's a star. He trained with Higgs when the University of my time. Then he moved to Jacare because it's close to his house back in the time. Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, how about Ricardo Liborio? Liborio is amazing fight too, man. He's, I saw him is with a lot of muscle and strong, but he's amazing when he trained. I heard a lot of people, they talk, man, he's very technical and he's very smooth with everybody. He's not kind of guy try to be stupid with you. With the, his size, is a big, it's amazing. A really good technique, good skills, you know. I love to watch him on the MMA fights back in the time. And then, I, you know, we can't see him anymore because he's not fighting anymore. But, uh, yeah, he's an amazing guy. Now, what about your student, uh, Saulo? 
Stout was, for me, one of the best competitors with the Gi. He's very smart when he competes and about point system and advantage. Yeah, he's, a, he's one of the best, in my opinion, a competitor. Did you think uh, he's one of those guys that had trouble in MMA because he didn't like the punch? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, his, his first fight is kind of tough fight and he have a problem, but, uh, I don't think he coming back because he tried to, you know, see his career more in, in uh, a jiu-jitsu and, uh, no gi. And then at the end of the day, he don't looking for fight anymore. It could be, um, I'm never talking about this with him. <laughs> what about uh, his brother? His brother is another guy who competed for a long time like you. <laughs> they really good. Both, both guys is good, but, uh, Saulo has been with me more than Shanji, you know? And, um, yeah, Saulo for me, uh, you know, I just kind of build him. He's, like I say, he's one of the best competitors. And Shanji follows follow his brother. He's amazing, too. He's very technical, very good, good long legs, long arms. Help him a lot, yeah, to get what he have, you know? It's a good career. Hey, do you watch MMA now in the States? Do you watch Not much, MMA? not much. No, when I like the guys, yes. I saw the guys in this last weekend is a Vitor, as a Cristiano Marcelo student. And uh, yeah, I tried to watch him as a nice guy. It's a good fight, man. And then I saw what the guy do to him on the on the way in. He tried to shake the guy's hands and the guy said, no, I'm not going to shake your hands. You know, this is, you know, it's bad, man, for this sport. And then I'm glad he win. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, uh, talk about uh, being in California. You're doing obviously seminars and stuff. Where's your school? Well, I'm. I don't have one school I be all the time, but I have one as a Leticia in uh, Morango School in the South Bay area. I have a uh, Hedges School in San Diego here. I have one in Carlsbad with Nick. We have few schools around. You know, I can go all the time. Yes. I have Ricardo Guimarães in Temecula. Yeah, I've had Isaac in Belmont. We have a few ones. Like I say, you know, I try to visit them all the time. Sometimes put the gear roll a little bit. That's that's my 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 dream. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, uh, do your kids prep, do jiu-jitsu, obviously? Some of they, them... do, they do self-defense. As a four daughters, and they all them do the self-defense, but not a what they want to do right now because they, you know, work and back and forth everywhere. But uh, every time they come with me, they try to review. It is amazing, you know. They say, hey, let's go to the class quick. And then I'm just going to squeeze them back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, do you you live near Hickson? I'm sorry? Do you live near Hickson? Do you, do you see Hickson often? Um, I see him. Actually, I talked to him today. I see him once in a while, yeah. He, I just leave him like two hours for him. He's in Los Angeles. I'm in San Diego. Do you uh, still do you still put on the gi and, and, and roll with him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every time I go with him, we finish in the match. Talking about the positions. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's not a big difference with any brother. We start to talk and it's some position pop out. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm, we're getting ready to close out because I, you know you're taking up a lot of your time, but I want to ask you about another family member of yours, another guy who was a legend that we lost. And that was a guy, I think he's a half brother, Halls Gracie. Yes. Well, what do you what are what are your memories of, of him? Because oh, I God. heard he was uh he had an American mother and he had been to college here and did wrestling and stuff. So this may have been a dangerous Gracie. Give us a little history. <laughs> he he's he's a very special guy. You know, actually, I start training with him when I'm a little kid. And then I build in my game through him. He's very, he's attacking. He's always, you know, and he's not a heavy guy. He's around 73 kilos, around 150, 160, 155. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's, for me, he's one of the best in the family. He's a, with the hard on the talk, and he put everybody together. He's amazing, amazing. I love him, yeah. And then, like I say, as my first jiu-jitsu things, you know, is be with him. And when he passed away with the hang light, you know, accident, yeah. and then I start back, I just go back to Hickson again and Horion, you know, in the, in the academy. But I'm, when I'm a little kid, I always go to Copacabana and train with him. 
and he's very enthusiastic, you know, always take me to the beach, you know, it looks like I'm his son for him. I remember how he, how he treats us with a lot of love, you know, and then we, we be in the academy, not because we need to go to the academy, we, we, we be in the academy because we love him, and then we're going to love his jiu-jitsu too, you know, and my yeah. father put us to train with him, and he's take care of amazing, you know, the time I be with him. Very special time for me. Excellent, excellent. Well, Hoy, this is a very special time for me. We're getting, you know, to speak to you about your fantastic career. I, I appreciate the time very much. And, uh, you know, nothing but the best for you. I hope that you, people catch you in seminars and things like that. Well, what do you have coming up before we finish up? Well, it's, uh, most of the time I work right now is like in the seminars and the workout uh, with uh, in the weekends. You know, mm. I just have to kind of be in in, uh, in Hawaii next weekend. Probably I'm going to go to Australia. And then I have a little vacation going to Indonesia. That's the place I like to go for surf. And coming back, I'm just make uh, Canada. We have a few schools in Canada. Actually, before that, I'm just going to go to Brazil to see the schools in April in Brazil, you know. Yeah, but uh, pretty much travel all over and do a seminar. Yeah, and make it, people understand what jiu-jitsu for, man. It's amazing art, you know, what we have. Make people feel more comfortable, feel more better, you know. Make sure yeah, you, you spend feel, the time. You feel like an sun. ambassador? I'm not feel like I'm back. My my father, you know, is the one. But I I, I try to share with how much love and how much you know um, we enjoy the martial art. We just we we pick to be our work, you know. And you know, it's a fun. It's everything, man. It's it's a semi bag, you know. It's a way of life. Kid, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, Hoyler, I appreciate a great deal. Thank you very much for the time and the interview, and I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much, Miguel. I hope to see you soon, man. Hey, make sure don't choke me. Oh, gosh. Hey, I, you know, before we finish, one quick question. Did you go to the Abu Dhabis in Las Vegas? Yes. I got the plaque for, for Hall of Fame. It's a beautiful. I just have it right here behind me. If you can right show, show it to us. Let's see if we Let can me get see this if thing. I can show. Right there. Right here. Look at that stuff. It's Those are all your trophies. Plaque, you have like pride trophy still, and uh, your Abu Dhabi trophies and everything. You kept everything. Yeah, I keep everything. This is uh, all the trophies for Abu Dhabi. First, second is uh, 99, 2000, 2001, and the third place right here. This is the last one. And the plaque for Abu Dhabi. And this uniform for the first fight in, uh, in 1999. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's you have a good. little museum there. I'm going to ask you to yeah. borrow that stuff one day. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Hoyler. Always a pleasure, and uh, you're always a, ch a champion everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, sir.